Okay, right. Let's finish off this chapter by looking at shadow pricing. Um, so really, or, or and Slack. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I want you to write down this. I want you to write shadow pricing and just write additional contribution. That's the key point here. It is what is the additional contribution from... So shadow pricing has to do with scarce, a scarce resource. The argument here is it doesn't really matter. It could be one, it might be material. So the argument is, what is the additional contribution we're going to get as a result of having an extra kilogram of scarce resource or an extra hour of scarce resource? That's what we're trying to measure here. So, I mean, we're just kind of reconfiguring and doing doing the equations again to find out what the additional contribution is. And you'll see why this sort of makes sense at the end, what type of decision we're trying to make when I, we do an example. Slack, on the other hand, is sort of saying, well, like I said, as a result of having bottlenecks and having scarce resource, some material is underused. So Slack is the amount by which a resource is underutilized. So, for example, if you're... If, if your maximum contribution said you should make 500 units of X and 550 units of Y, well, you, you, and, and I don't know, say for example, we're talking about kilograms <clears throat> and we want to know, you would, you would multiply the amount of kilograms you would need to make X, multiply the amount of kilograms you need to make Y at this optimal point and see if you've used up all the kilograms in stock or available. And if you haven't, then it means, so for example, I don't know, imagine this was two and this was two. So that's a thousand and here it's a thousand one hundred. But it says that in stock you had two thousand three hundred. So it means that obviously um, this is a situation where kilograms are not the constraint, but they are, we haven't been able to use all of them because we had another constraint which stopped us from using all the kilograms. So your slack in this case would be 200, right? Because you have 2,200 here, 2,300. So that's your slack. So your task for slack is find your optimal point, calculate the resources, the, the resources that have gone into making that product, and then, um, and then just subtract that from the, from the available amount. So, where are we? Graphically speaking, it'll occur where the optimal point doesn't fall on a given resource line. Of course, the optimal solution will typically occur where the two critical constraint lines, there'll be no slack um, as they are fully utilized for those constraints. Yeah. But for other constraints, the fact that the optimal solution is not the line means the resources are not fully utilized, so there will be slack. So it, it really, the, the point of slack means that, well, at this point, where you're at optimal, there's no point buying any more slack. So if you buy any more slack, you're still restricted by those critical issues. So there's no point. <clears throat> so gaining or losing a small unit of the scarce resource will have no impact. Sorry, for critical constraints, zero slack, then gaining additional units of these scarce resources will allow the optimal unit to be improved. So the scarce resources, of course, yes. Um, but in terms of slack, you know, there's nothing we can do with it. It's not going to help us because we have enough of it. So what we need to sort out are the scarce resources. See if we can get some more. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so for non-critical um, constraints, so this this is where we the things that are, are sl in slack, actually, gaining or losing a small number will have no impact on the optimal solution. We can't do anything. So let's talk about the scarce resources. You can see to determine how much this makes scarce resource worth to the business, let's talk about shadow pricing. <clears throat> so I, I mentioned earlier on, we're looking at, it says it here, usually the extra contribution. What is the increase in value by having an extra unit, an additional, one additional unit of a limiting resource? That's, that, that, that's what it is. And you, you'll see this, I'll explain this in simple English once we've done an example. Here you have an interesting example where the optimal solution was to make four X's and four Y's. And they gave you this optimal contribution of 360 currently, right? Because we had done some work here. So, and just to kind of show you using simultaneous equations, six is a good example here. 6X six plus 3Y is equal to 36. 4X plus 8Y is equal to 48. 
So again, I need to make I need I need to want something needs to get go. So the question is, it doesn't matter which one I pick. I'm going to I'm just going to rearrange this this way. 4x plus 8y is equal to 48, and 6x plus 3y is equal to 36. Um, no, that didn't that didn't matter, um, or did it? I'm just trying to make the bigger. I want to get the bigger number up above. So if I multiply this by two, and I mul sorry, I multiply this by three, and I multiply this by two, the whole equation, right? That's how this works. So you have to multiply the whole equation. Nothing changes in the equation actually when you multiply an equation by the same number throughout. So if I multiply this whole thing by three, I will just to prove this four and four. <clears throat> you will get 12x plus 24y, yes, 3 times 8 is 24y is equal to 3 times 48, four, 3, 3 eighths is 24, 2, 3, 12, 14, you'll have this. And on this side you will have 2 times 6 which is 12x plus 6y is equal to 72. So now I can subtract this comfortably. So x 12x minus 12x is 0. 24y minus 6y is 18. And that's equal to 144 minus 72, which comes to 272. So y, of course, is equal to 4. So I can chuck this in, this y, into any of these equations. If I do 6x plus 3 times 4 is equal to 36. So 6x plus times 6x plus 12 is equal to 36. That means that 6x is equal to 36 minus 12, which is 24, and that means that x is equal to 4. So we know, we, we can prove that again. So the, the real issue here is that, um, the real issue here is that, uh, where is my, sorry. Oops. The real issue here, of course, is 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 this. What I'm telling you is, if I gave you an extra pose and one extra hour was available for the cutting process. So imagine I didn't have 36, but I had 37. So now my equation has changed. 6x plus 3y is equal to 37. And, and of course, this remains, the hours in the assembly division remain the same. 48. So the, the issue here now is um, what is my new um, cont what well what is my new um, <clears throat> optimal point? <clears throat> what is my new optimal point? So um, so I will find my new values of x and and y. So. Um, there's something else I need to tell you. I need to give you the, um, the the formula. So I've gotten 360. I imagine this C is um, well. So this 4 360 divided by. Let me just find out what the actual contribution curve was. One second in your textbook. Um, go to TYU8. Give me the contribution. Curve uh, Hebus uh, uh, sorry, T Y U two. Yes, here we are. Um, so the T Y U eight. What we have is a da, 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 da. yes. Your contribution is fifty x plus forty. So this is your equation: fifty x plus forty y. That's your contribution equation. So just testing this here: fifty times four plus forty times four. That's two hundred plus one hundred and sixty. That's why you have three hundred and sixty. So remember, you'd always have this contribution curve. Um, given to you. It means you can sell each X for 50 pounds and you can sell each Y for 14. So either you sell all X's or you sell all Y's or you sell a combination of the two.
So let's find our new contribution given this kind of equation. So I do exactly the same thing that you saw me doing. I try and get rid of one of them. So I either multiply this by, um, by 2 and multiply this by 3 <clears throat> and do exactly, you walk through this whole thing. And when you walk through this whole thing, you find out that um, x is equal to x is equal to 4.222 and that y is equal to 3.888 and you take all this and you plug it in again to this to this thing into this um, <coughs> equation and what you get is 50 times 4.222 plus 40 times 3.888 and you now arrive at a new contribution of 366.67. So like what I was saying, the key point is shadow pricing is what is the additional contribution. So I have an additional contribution of £6.70p. Now this is a clincher. This is why this is important. Now, <clears throat> um, it says, I believe in this question, that an hour of labor, the current cost of an hour of labor is £10. If I want to buy an hour of labor, it's £10. So imagine if I'm getting a contribution of £6.70, it means I'm able to sell each of these products for £16.70, which is why I'm getting £6.70. Now, if you remember with contribution, contribution con um, goes, towards, goes towards our fixed cost. So we're happy with any contribution that we get. Now, here's the question. Because this resource is scarce, yes, I am currently paying £10, but it, I probably will not be able to get it for £10 because it's scarce. So the question here is that, well, n at least now that I know this, I know how much I'm willing to go out there and buy labor if I can't get it for 10 At least I know that, that well, I know the maximum I'm going to go is £16.70 because, right, if I can get it for 11 I'm still making contribution. If I can get it for 12, I'm fine. 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 16 pound, 69. I'm still making contribution of a pound, sorry, of a penny. But the only way I could know this was by finding the additional contribution, working backwards to basically finding out what the revenue was for, for each um, <clears throat> unit to be able to get that contribution. Um, and 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 therefore um and then work backwards so really the purpose of this whole shadow pricing is to really tell us going back to this fancy term it therefore represents the maximum premium the firm should be willing to pay for an extra unit um, if you like so it's it just helps us understand how much more are we willing to pay for an extra unit and that's shadow pricing. That's shadow pricing. So it's just about doing as many questions as we see. Right. Good luck.